Since getting my foil quill, I've been playing around with fonts to find the ones I like best when adding text to projects. Most fonts are made to cut in Silhouette Studio and have two lines that are wide enough to cut words or letters, similar to the most fonts that I have on my screen. The exception are single line or sketch fonts that look like one line similar to handwriting or printing. Now you can see one of my purchased fonts here. And in reality, even single line fonts, if I zoom way, way in, are made up of two lines. They're just very, very close together. I absolutely love the way single line or sketch fonts look when I'm printing the inside of a card, especially on vellum. As you saw in the little video there, it just gives it an absolute handwriting type finish, and I love what they look like. So then I began to wonder if any of the fonts I have installed on my computer could work like single line or sketch fonts. I began by going to wordmark.it If you've never done this, it's a fabulous way to find out what your um, different fonts will look like when you're trying to pick out a font in whatever you're doing on Studio. You enter a word or a phrase. I'm just going to put the word sketch. Hit enter. And then every font I already have in my font folder will come up and show me what it looks like. Gives me the name and gives me uh, a picture of what it would look like. So I went through my entire library to look for very, very thin lines and I came up with several. So these are the ones I found that I was able to make into a single line or sketch font or facsimile. These are the single line sketch fonts I already own, but each one of them costs money. So the first one I came to was Calamity Jane. Now I'm going to show you exactly what I went through with Calamity Jane and figured out if I highlight it and look at it very closely, it's pretty darn close on how I would like it to be. So I tried that as a single line font when I was quilling the last time and it looked fabulous. Now I did come to one called Click that I love the simplicity of it, but in reality they were farther apart than some of the others. Let me zoom in so you can see. So when you zoom in it almost looks like most fonts. So this is what I decided to do. I'm going to leave it zoomed in. I'm going to get rid of my textile box. And I went over to my offset panel and I activated it. And I did try this on some of the others. Didn't work at all because they were already close enough. But this particular one, I did an internal offset. It starts out at a distance of 0.125 inches. And you can see it didn't change or do anything. So then I decided to lessen the amount of distance. And you can do it with the drag uh, bar. But I wanted to show you how far down I had to go and what it looked like when it started showing something. So I'm at 60, nothing, 55, 50, 45. And when I got to 30, nope, 25, Ah, oh, 15, it started putting stuff inside. Now then, when I went to 10, it put an outline around the whole thing, or inside it, I should say, and I applied it, and then, I'm gonna zoom out just a little so you can see this, then I drug away the one that was printed, or the internal offset, and you can see that it's much, much closer to what a single line font looks like. So I right clicked and I grouped it so I wouldn't lose it. 
And that is what I ended up using for click was all the way down to a distance of 0 0.010. It looked fabulous when I printed it as a single line font. Then I tried the same thing on Forestelli. Didn't need to do anything. It was close enough. Then I tried the same thing on Hitman. Well, if you go, show you one more time, close enough, and then you do an internal offset on Hitman. Again, I'll go down, down, down. You can obviously move the bar and do it much quicker. You see that nothing's in there. Nothing, nothing. Oh wait, there's little ones. And then it filled in. That's how you can tell whether it works or not. And then I applied and tore it away again. Whoopsie. And tore it away. And you can see that the one I tore away is much thinner than the one I had before. And I left this for a single line font worked perfect. So that's kind of the process I used to figure out if I liked it or not. Kamuri, the one that I tried here, didn't need it at all. Lily Bloom, I was able to put an inside offset in it. Mantan didn't need anything. Matilda didn't need anything. Paprika, I was able to put something in it. So each one I did try to find out if it would work any differently. I'll show you what they looked like when they were printed. I think each one of them looked pretty good and didn't have to spend any money on it. I did give you a list of the things I used over here. The purchased sketch fonts you can find in all these places and then all of the other ones whether you have them or not, I would go through your own list to see what you already have for free. You can find out where I got them. Many of the ones that came from the Creative Fabrica or Fabrica site, I got during their 300 days of freebies last year when I was looking at a font every day. Um, the Paprika is one of my favorites. Right now it's in the Silhouette Design Store for free. And Susanna is also one of my favorites. So simple, didn't need to put any offset in it. It is also on, it's in Creative Fabrica for free right now. So I hope this helps you. Uh, if you like single fonts, single line fonts or sketch fonts as much as I do, maybe this will give you a way to figure out if you have more that will work that didn't cost you money.